This is my idea of hell. Lots of broken bits of car and no clue, no plan of action of how they could possibly go back together. But for some people, this is their bread and butter. Matt Armstrong. Matt Armstrong is one of the most prolific creators on YouTube. Automotive is his speciality, building and modifying cars, some of which look totally written off, and he's absolutely killing it. He's got two and a half million subscribers. On average, one of his films nets one million viewers in just 24 hours. He works incredibly hard and all hours of the day, so it's pretty awesome to get a look behind the scenes in his house of work. Matt. Thanks for having me into your gaff. Um, th this is the part of Motor that terrifies me, frankly. I don't understand <laughs> how you do what you do, but it's, um, but it's brilliant to come and have a look around and Hello. get a bit of an insight. Thanks for coming. It's about time you've uh, come over. But yeah. you've actually caught me like midway through all the work. We haven't had time to clean up, so you're getting to see it like Perfect. real. Exactly. Like This is what it normally looks like. As it should be. Because <laughs> yeah. when, I, when I look in the corner and I see all this bent metal and all this stuff that's come off this car, it just <laughs> fills me with dread. Because I was, I was one of those people who would always lose a piece of the Lego set and not be able to complete anything. Oh, yeah. You know, it, like. The beauty of this unit, it, I think it looks bigger on camera than it actually is in real life. But I kind of like this size because if I do put something down, we know it's like not you know too it far away. So yeah. it doesn't get lost on the carpet. Yeah, we, I still spend hours looking for my phone after I put it down somewhere in here. But it, we, we manage, we manage. Yeah. So this is one you baked before. This is the Maserati, isn't it? Which, yeah. Which was a bit controversial because you, you widened <laughs> yeah. the wheelbase. But I love this car because um, it was brilliantly made by Maserati. They did a great job with it. And then you've enhanced it. So yeah. yeah. Wide track the, and some yeah, serious is, hench bodywork going on. This is um, one of the longest cars I've kept. And you know what? Everyone hates on Maserati, like, oh, they're unreliable. But this has been like the most reliable car. I think they're it, the most underrated manufacturer. I mean, the, it's got. It's slow. Yeah. But it, it's good. Why is it slow? I think it's heavy. Because you, you've added some stuff to it? <laughs> well, like, we also took away some stuff yeah. because there's a lot of this chopped out underneath. Is it? And there's a lot of arch chopped out underneath. But, and it, I guess we've got bigger and wider wheels, but it is slow. It yeah. is like, it, it is this, probably the slowest car I've got. I think the Range Rover diesel beats this car. No way. <laughs> it so makes I, a lot of noise, but it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So I remember comparing the, the, the original GT to the Alpha 8C. They're basically the same yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I couldn't believe the, the sound of the Alpha was better. They tuned up the exhaust and everything. Yeah. But it drove, it's the worst handling car I've ever driven in my life. <laughs> and yet it's the same platform as the Maserati. The Maserati was perfect. Oh, uh, it's okay. But hence why we've done, a, we've done all this wide body stuff to it. It's more of a show car now. Yeah. Um, Hence all like the Valvoline wrap and everything like that. We take it to shows, doesn't really move anywhere. This kind of make it undrivable. <laughs> does, does it really? It, I think it's just, it, it's too wild. It, with the kit, at the minute, this is at drive height. So yeah. like when we park up at show, it will, it'll be lowered down. But when it's lowered down, literally the side skirt is on the floor. It's but, not pothole friendly. Oh, no. I see, this has got a lift under it. Yeah, oh, so it. Even, okay. even at drive height now, yeah. We don't, you don't get that much clearance still off the floor. So I right. find myself, you still hit the speed bumps, you hit everything. So it's not the most practical car, but I didn't expect it to be after putting all yeah. this stuff on. This is wider than, uh, well, as wide as a wide body Lamborghini Aventador. So, wow. and they're wide anyway. So getting this through, I, I went in London, do you know, through one of those, um, Width restrictor things. Yes, they're hurried, aren't they? That was stress. Absolute stress. <laughs> New but... rims after that? Yeah, pretty much. They've been refurbished, yeah. But no, we've got still got more stuff to do with this. I'm going to do like a, a half a cage in it to make it look like a GT3 car. It's going to yeah. have like some bucket seats put in, just so it looks kind of like a, a race car. At the minute, it's got completely standard interior in. And if you go around a corner, you get thrown out the seat. So uh, it's, it's not bad. It's one of the coolest cars I've got, and it's because there's not any others looking like this, well, in UK, Europe, probably anywhere, that's why I keep it, because it's my baby. If I see, it, if I see anyone else driving this round, I'll be upset. It's stunning. Really good job. No, and then it's cool. This one is your, your latest build, isn't it? Yes. Your rebuild. This, is, this car's mental. I, was, I mean, the crash it's had is comical. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's, so this went into a wall in Peter Into a world. house. Yes, into a wall and a house. Fortunately, everyone yeah. was okay. Front end went through a house into yeah. a living room, and the back end went into their garden wall. Uh, this is one of the like the most in-depth repairs I've done structural-wise, and we actually had uh, you guys would see it on the video. Um, 
I brought Jack over from the US, uh, who helps Freddie out to help me with all the structural work, because obviously you want to be sure that it's 100% sound because we're going to be taking this around the track and everything. But this is not only uh, the panels on the outside have been replaced, it's also had the structural work on the inside which has been replaced because this got hit all the way through. All this parcel shelf was all crumpled up. So it's literally been all chopped out and put back in the old cut and shut as everyone calls it's it. Good. But it's looking pretty good. And I've kind of, I feel like I've, you know, I, I feel like we've done it quite fast sort of impressed myself really because it, it's uh it's looking really good compared to how it was so i'm i'm excited to get on the road you're like a kind of crash site reinvestigator aren't you I saw <laughs> that you had your 3d animation oh this is how the crash happened and the speed it looked like he was tanking it well he lost it the, we couldn't work out how we ended up into the house and then we put the video out and because so many people watch the videos we get those emails and messages afterwards and then we ha actually had the person who was investigating the crash, yeah. uh, who does crash reenactment yeah. animations. Um, they emailed me the actual reenactment of the accident and how fast they were traveling, 90 mile an hour, round a corner, and I think they let off and stamped on the brakes, which just gave Rotation. it loads of oversteer, straight round and then smashed straight into the wall. And then that kind of helped us, okay, that's what's happened. It, it, it's easier to, work out as well where there's going to be damage when you know how it's been crashed but really for how fast it's gone into the wall it's not as bad as it could have been you're it, turning into like a car doctor yeah, it, and, could, and it could have see, done so much worse yeah like the method of injury and you've seen so many of these because you you started this out as a hobby you know is that right and you've yeah. you've just accumulated all this knowledge uh, but but like so when you get stuck if that's because <laughs> there, there must be always something you don't know what could come up but you go and you, there's, there's, you just reach out, you get to whatever. Yeah, so is. like anything I'm like unsure of, there's always help online. There's, all, there, there's always someone that knows. But yeah. the good thing is, it, it generally, that it's all nuts and bolts. It's all the same. <laughs> like, it's all the same. Whether it's like a BMW, a Maserati, a Ferrari, it, they're all generally the same stuff. And a lot of people get scared of it. And that's kind of what's built my confidence up throughout the years. I worked on the best example was my first kind of rebuild rebuilt car was an Audi TT, Hannah's Audi TT, which she crashed, it was 400 pound a boy back from the insurance, uh, I think it was, rebuilt that. And then later on down the line, I did an Audi R8. And I was like, well, this is ex same. exactly the same as the Audi TT, but it's a supercar. But if I felt so familiar with everything that come off and then it makes you realize, okay, I worked on a BMW before, and generally throughout the years, they're pretty same. They update a lot of the stuff. Electronics, yeah. that is the, the devil. We can leave electronics, we don't like that. But everything else tends to generally be the same sort of stuff. Sure. But um, yeah, it, it, it builds up your confidence. And then the only thing is, I want more and more and more now. What, what, what's the, what can we repair next? How worse can we get the damage? More challenge. Yeah. <laughs> when you get into structural stuff, so from racing cars over the years, <clears throat> and you get really, I don't know what's the best word for it, anal, about yeah. how it handles. They're on the setup patch all the time, they're checking corner weights, and if yeah. something's a kilogram heavier on the front right than the left, you, you can feel it, and if the toes aren't, aren't is, you know, spot on, and, it feel, and you, you notice something's not quite cock on on the steering wheel. Yeah. So with, when you're doing big chassis stuff, yeah. that, that's hard. I know you can, you've even gone to the jigs and things like this. Oh yeah, so this, th so this one as well, we was worried about, um, so again, a lot of people will think, oh, it needs to be on a jig, it needs to have measurements and everything like that. So what, what we'll do, obviously we'll get advice as well before we start, but before, um, throughout the years, obviously we've picked up a lot of experience, but we'll have to, you have measurement points. Right. And sometimes the dealerships will give you the measurement points, but if they're not allowed to, we have to go to body shops and try and ask for favours here and there. But generally just measuring up chassis, making sure they do all line up with this, we spoke to Jack from America and he was, um, he used to be a panel beater in, in America and that's what he did. So he knows, okay, this is straight, that's not straight. But generally something like this, it's quite, we know what to look for. So yeah. for example, if some, this has been hit in here, our main worry was if it's banana the whole car, yes. <laughs> you'd notice something in a roof or a, an A pillar on the other side. Something wouldn't okay. line up on the other side because it's pulled it. But yeah. Generally, all on the other side, everything all lines up straight, and the roof's carbon. So if there's anything gone in this, it's, there's not much, there's, this is flimsy as anything. So, but 
everything lines up straight. And the best thing as well, after we do the bills, we normally take them to the main dealer right. and get them all checked over. Whether they go, at, like the race cars and stuff, will get corner weights and, and that type of stuff. This, it'll probably just be a four wheel alignment. But generally, you can tell if something's out. Like body panels won't line up and there'll be something pretty obvious. But I guess you should drive this. I'd love when we're to, done, yeah. I'd love to have a go. And we'll see if we can beat Ben's Hurricane in it. Yeah. <laughs> We've yes. got four wheel drive in this one now. Okay, so well, he needs to be put back in his place. Yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. The, the fact that you're using modern cars too, and that the, the, the dealers kind of will check things with you, yeah. I think is, that must be reassuring. But you you inspired me to go the this get this Lancia. So and with Tank, <laughs> I was walking around with him, and we were looking at roof lines and stuff like that, because the whole yeah. thing is one piece. Yeah. And he said, "Oh yeah, forget that one. There's a you can see a ripple in the roof line." Yeah. Which, and, yeah. And he says, "Once they're bent, that's it." Oh um, yeah. So we've seen. So if you look on, we've had one car where the front wheel. It was only a small damage, but yeah. on one of the cars, the front wheel, the suspension. This is a future car which is coming up, but the suspension is completely ripped off, and it's only damaged the wheel. But the da the wheel's gone back into like the A-pillar of the car. Yeah. And as it's hit the A-pillar of the car, it's just caused damage there. So it's pushed the door back, but it's also pulled the A-pillar downwards. So when you rub your hand along here, you right. can feel a little lump. And it's because it's just from the wheel, it's just pulled the A-pillar down. And because of that, it's the car the was a complete write-off. Like it, it can't go back on the road, it's category B. But it's little things like that. And I didn't even notice that to start okay. with. I didn't even notice that. We brought the body shop down and uh, they had a look and then they were just feeling around. They were like, yeah, this is gone. Like, and then they felt it right. It, I mean, again, everything is repairable, but it's, it's just the expense like the McLaren. The McLaren yeah. was repairable, but we just had to retub the whole car, which is <laughs> like... That's a big <laughs> deal. Yeah, it, it's effectively just getting a whole nother car. But yeah, this is... Uh, it, it, again, luckily, nothing like this on the BMW, but... Yeah, something like that you wouldn't notice. You look at the car and you see the photos, you think, oh, it's only done suspension damage. It's not that bad. The door's been pushed back a bit, but we'll get around that. Might be hinges, but yeah, it generally had just pulled the, the chassis that way. And uh, yeah, there's things like that that you can get stung on doing crash damaged cars and stuff. But that's all the fun of it. That's why I enjoy. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. It's a bit of a risk, yeah. a bit of a gamble, but no, I enjoy it. How, but you, I, having met you a few times and, and you know, you're, and you're, you're so positive and you attack everything with that with a smile, <laughs> yeah. you must get stressed though, because you, you've now, because you've got your channel, you, you're, you know, there are deadlines, yeah. you've got a yeah. ton of work to do, you've kind of given up some time today, but it must get, do you, how, do you get, do you get timeline get, stressed? I, get, I think I get stressed, yeah, I think there is points where we get stressed, where I'm struggling uh, for parts and that, but again, I've never had a positive outcome from being negative about it. Like, yeah. we never, it, every time, like, even, I think maybe it rubs off from my dad as well. Like, something goes wrong, we just laugh about it. Oh, no, that's happened, that's done. Like, it, what are we gonna get from being negative about it? We're not, like, we might as well laugh about it, carry on, it's happened, it's not gonna change anything. And uh, we've had way better results from just being positive about stuff yeah. than, yeah, crying about it. I mean, now it's, we're doing, it. it is, we're just enjoying ourselves doing it and luckily like with youtube and that we're, we're able to film it it's all part of the journey but a, a lot of people would comment on my videos and say oh he doesn't care because he's making content out of it but the thing is i've done all this way before i was making any money on youtube when we was the, rebuilding the crash damage cars when i had no subscribers it was still the same thing we had to stay positive and it's just we've just learned as we've gone up so it's been the same regardless but yeah you can't if it gets you down, you're never going to get anywhere with it. But it does stress you out. But at the times when you fix it, it gives you way more yeah. like uh, job satisfaction when it is finished. And that's what I enjoy about it. Like the trophy for me is driving the car afterwards, which is what like, that's why we only uh, rebuild the cars I want to drive. <laughs> was, that's what I was going to ask you. So you're picking partly. There's there's some amazing stories. They're comical. You yeah. Know, like. Freddie's car that was floating around with a palm tree through the roof yeah. or something like that. You know, you're this one that's had its um, comedy sort of survival. <laughs> but you're also picking stuff you want to drive, basically. Yeah, so we'll pick stuff, cool cars that I want to drive, out, that I want to buy, and then also repairs that I want to do. Now it's got to the point where it's like, okay, we've done a lot of cars, and a lot of people will ask, like, 
you're going to run out of cars to do, you're going to run out of cars to build. So now I'm, I want to learn as much as I can. Again, if this YouTube stuff ever all finishes and decides to just switch off tomorrow, like I've got a skill set which I've yep. learned through doing this. Uh, so picking like jobs like this where it's big structural damage, which I've never done before, to learn on and, and try myself is then picking up a skill myself doing it. So now I'll, I'll pick a like this one needed a rear quarter. I've never done something like that before. I've learnt how to do it, and now I feel confident of doing that again. And yeah. then we've done something like the Mercia Largo, which needed a full engine rebuild. We've rebuilt a V12 Mercia Largo. I'm sure I could rebuild a Volkswagen Golf engine now because of that. So there's skills I pick up and find interesting throughout that. I'll see the repairs, and I think, yeah, I'd love to learn how to do that. And I think people like watching me learn because yeah. I think they're learning at the same time. Something I haven't done yet, is a flood damaged car, and I would like to, I'd like to do something like that because I, even though you've heard even Freddy's story, yeah, even Freddy's story. He's, he's still picking sand it out of the seats. It looks fun. It looks fun. <laughs> yeah, flood damaged car. I'd love to give it a go, and um, yeah, and just experience that. I've never done flood, never done fire damaged cars, so there's still a long way to go, <sighs> and uh, yeah, still You're a lot a of things I need to learn. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a cheeky question because there's one type of car I've never I've not seen you do, which is electric. Oh, because <laughs> they're and they're lethal. Literally, you have to you have to have a special court. You have to go to rubber gloves, all that kind of. You yeah. have to do it safely. And they yeah. are, it's a beast. Well, well, I just mentioned literally about probably a minute back. Electric is the devil. <laughs> Anything electrical faults which happen on the car, it just feels like out of my control. It's yeah. really hard to understand why something is not working that way with, with electric fault. And I just don't. I just can't wrap my head around it. And as, as I mentioned as well, the trophy at the end is me driving the car and electric cars just don't do it for me. I think the whole, it, the kind of soul of the car is like the noise, the feel of it, like the, the, the cold start and just the electric, it doesn't, I feel like it doesn't, it's not a car, it's more of a computer and I don't, I just don't get the buzz out. Some people might, yeah. and they'll see that completely different, so I do, but I've just never got the kick out of electric car. I've drove them, I've drove, a lot of the Porsches, uh, the, the Taycans and stuff, and they're fast as anything, but just something the isn't there. For you. Like that Maserati is slow, but it makes the best sound ever, yeah. and that's why I enjoy driving it. Whereas an electric car, just I can't get my head around it, and to repair one, it just doesn't feel right to me. Off, so off the charts. I, exactly. I feel personally that they'll come and go. I can't see them lasting. I think they will, I think they're a temporary fix and they will come and go. I can't see every single person in the country owning an electric car. And these, like an iPhone, if you've got an iPhone 3 now, it barely works. It's the slowest thing ever. And as technology advances, as these electric cars advances, you've got an old electric car, it's just a disposable item at the end. Once you needed the update 5.2 on it, I think it's old, it will slow down, it's not gonna work, the battery won't last as long. Yeah. And it's a disposable item, whereas you drive 1980 cars now and they still work as new and you still get the enjoyment you did when you first drove them. Electric cars, I'm sorry Elon Musk, but <laughs> I think it's a temporary solution at the minute. <laughs> so for you, what's the coolest car you could get hold of? I mean, I know you're always looking ahead to, and there's, you've gone for some big bangers. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned 80s. Yeah. Which is a cool era. 80s, 90s, I think it's golden era. Yeah, I, I was always, so, <sighs> Again, it has to work with my channel as well, but do you know like old Escort Cosworths, Escort, yeah. Escort, I'd love to do one of them, but I don't know loads about them, which is what's scary, but I would love to do one, and again, it's if the audience would like it. So it's quite interesting to put a little feeler out, I might get comments under the video of, oh yeah, you should do one of them. Um, but again, the, the Lamborghini Mercialago was my dream ultimate car. I never thought I'd ever own one. So, I've kind of like accomplished that dream already, rebuilt it literally from ground upwards, engine, bodywork, the whole thing. That was my ultimate dream car and we managed to do it. And then it's like, well, now what? So if anything comes up with a story, I'd yeah. love to get, again, uh, uh, Rolls Royces as well is always going to be one that I've, I've always wanted to do, but uh, there's a st an ongoing story on my channel that n normally Rolls Royces, when they get damaged, they'll get a category B. They won't go on the road again um, and they're too expensive to repair. So they, it's hard to get hold of a crash damaged Rolls Royce. So I'd love to go that type of way. Again, 
if we can go to like hypercar region, but that's really difficult because of the value of the car. They tend to get repaired by the dealer if they ever get smashed. But we'll see, we will see. It's, it's hard to have the balance. We try to have like a supercar balance and then like a yeah. more uh, attainable car on the, on the channel as well. So it, whatever comes up, we never know. Unattainable unicorn. Like, yeah. What do you think is the old? Oh, because you've now been under the skin of uh, pretty much everything. Yeah. Uh, certainly yeah. at least in the modern, but you, I know you've got an eye for things. Yeah. So what was, I mean, what was your poster car? Or what would be now when you look back, you think, what's the ultimate hypercar? No, without being the, bound to an <laughs> was, era. Uh, for some reason, it's always been the Merchant Largo, but like the Porsche 9, 918s, I love them. Any like Conan's egg or something like that, I'd be so, I've never sat in one of them. I've never, like, I've just looked at them and think, well, this is just ridiculous and I'm never going to be able to ever afford one, so I've never paid any interest to it. But the more I think about it, the more I think I'd love to get my hands on one of them and work out if they are as prestigious as everyone makes out. Yeah. Since like, I always used to think Lamborghinis are the, one of the most expensive and prestigious cars and once you start working on them, you find, oh, well, this thing's off a of Volvo, this thing's off a of Ford. There's lots Maybe of Audi parts. Not, yeah, there's yeah. Audi parts on it and then we could cross-reference a lot of stuff and save a lot of money. Are Conan's eggs going to be like that? Or like the Zondas or Pagani's? And uh, that is, are all they going to be the same out of a parts bin like the Lamborghinis are? Uh, and I'll be interested to find that out. I but don't think they are, but you're the one that would find out. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You need a lot of money to find yeah. out, though. That's the issue. <laughs> so I, I put a dent in one and I had a look inside it and it looked, um, it looked you know, it had Koenig's egg written on it still. <laughs> so yeah. I think Christian is definitely doing his home knitting. Oh, I'd love to get my hands on one, but. I, like I say, most of the uh, the hypercars, once they get a smash or something like that, because of the value of them, either the main dealer would just repair them and put them back on the road, yeah. or they're completely written off and they don't get put back on the road because they don't want anybody else to repair them, like myself, like a DIYer to, oh, here's a Conan's egg, he's rebuilding it in a shed in Leicester and putting it back on the road. They don't want that. So it's either main dealer or it's a no-go. So yeah. it's so hard to get hold of. But if I put it out there, who knows? It's possible. Who knows? So this looks great. So when is this guy going to be finished? So it's going to the body shop next and that quarter panel, the bumpers and everything yep. have got to be painted. We've got a few aftermarket parts to go on to it. Of course, it's going to be tuned. We're going to try and get some more power out of it. So what are you going to increase it by? Honestly, I have no idea because they're quite new, these ones. So I know I have to send the ECU off yep. to be unlocked. I think they can get, you can get to around 700, 750 horsepower, right. which is going to be insane for a BMW M3. You can switch it between four-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive, which I think I'm going to enjoy um, that because I generally just like rear-wheel drive cars. It's just a bit leery, keep you awake. But when we're on track and we're against Ben, it seems that four-wheel drive was a lot faster. Four-wheel drive, and I think his tyres helped him. Yes, you know. I think so, yeah. Plus, I think if definitely. maybe I'd done one more lap, without going in the gravel. Maybe, yeah, have, I think we could have, probably could have got it. I just want to say again, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, but you're, We've got great content out of it. You're the first person I've met that where I've driven something, made a mistake <clears throat> and just gone, it would have been even better if you crashed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really? I wasn't but, so sure. But I think it would be more hilarious if we can beat Ben in his Huracan with the BMW M3 because this is a, a BMW M3 and he's got a hundreds of thousands of pounds worth yeah. of Lamborghini Huracan. It'd be more funny it, I could even sit in the back in this one and, and we could go around the track. What's his power output in that? He's got. They're like, are they 610 horsepower, I yeah. think? Four wheel drive. Big, wide, that's, it's got They're wide tyres. It's a lot yeah. The reason it was quick at Teesside is yeah. it's a lot of rubber and he had the stickier tyre, for sure. Yeah, and I watched, so I overlaid the two laps of uh, your lap and Ben's lap and Ben, on the, his car was insanely stable. So. It went into a corner, yeah. hands like that, uh, unwind the hands straight out, into another corner like that. With the McLaren, both of oh, us, we're like, busy. whoa, 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 like, yeah. we, we, it's kind of keeping All that car straight so was, it was an impossible, yeah. So I'm hoping this will be more stable. It's going to be heavier than Ben's, but it's all about, I think his is a naturally aspirated car. This one's yeah. got turbos. That might not play to an advantage with us getting out the corners with turbo lag, but if we can keep it hot up in the revs, it will be interesting. But I'd love to beat him in this. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a few little extra advantages we could sew into it. Maybe a wet track. 
Yes. Obviously, you can't book yeah. the rain, but <laughs> unless we book a Bowser, yeah, it's possible. We could potentially do that. We could potentially do that, but yeah, that would be interesting. But I think if we're going to beat him, this would be a fun car to beat him. Definitely. In. We'll give him a go. Yeah, we'll get some sticky tyres. And um, yeah, so you've got, you're not far away. And will you um, do suspension as well? Or yeah, so we've got suspension to add on to it. We've got exhaust, we've got different wheels, tyres, um, and. Well, so we've got like yeah all the induction kit the usual stuff we're not going too crazy with it but just the general like oem plus modifications just to improve it the best we can but yeah we have a full setup and i think we'll have the best chance we've got in this with that four wheel drive but i don't know how they drive i, don't, I honestly don't know how these drive and the old the older ones drove brilliantly the m i had an m4 and that drove they, amazing. They are amazing. I, for me, there was a seminal moment in 2007. That yeah. was, I can't get the models wrong. Was it 92, the E92? E92, yeah, the yeah. V8, yeah. When that came out, for me, it, it, went, it was like a transformation. The whole company changed. Oh, yeah. It, it went yeah. from a heavy lump with a heavy lump in the front, and yeah. the thing wasn't very well supported to a, a really proper... Oh, uh, the, the good cars. I can't, wait. I can't wait to get it on the road. So yeah. it's, it'd be interesting to see how this one drives, because it is. I think it's heavier than the older ones, but... but, but it would be because it's four wheel drive now yeah. and not, it's got the diff, it's got the drive shafts coming out the front and everything. But is that going to help it? We'll find out. Be exciting. Yeah. I can't believe how much time you spend doing it because you're, you're, you're working day and night on these cars to get yeah. them done, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're here like, again, so I'll start late, 11 o'clock, but then I'll finish 12, 1 in the morning because once you're coming here, it's like a time capsule. We shut the doors, you don't know what time it is. And I'll just work till it's finished. And no clock or, on the wall. No, no clock on the wall. We just Jeez. yeah, we just crack on until until I'm literally cannot lift a spanner anymore or the job's done. But I think because I, I enjoy it, you don't really no. I'm not watching the clock to go home. I just want to get the car done because I really enjoy doing it. I mean, as I said, there's moments where you, it stresses you out, but yeah. the, the the feel of getting the car done overpowers that stress. So. Yeah, I enjoy it, and until I stop enjoying it, I'll be here till <laughs> late at night, early hours of the morning, so. I just admire your fearlessness. I think it's amazing how much you've, knowledge you've acquired in such a like, short space of time. You've, you've, what you're, oh, yeah, you're no, I bending love it. metal, re-engineering re <laughs> the engine, yeah. suspension, the lot. But is there, is there anything you think, oh, that was, that you might, you, you've done it, you put all that effort and work in, yeah. and you get, you get it out in your hands and think, this is, it's, it's disappointing, or have you, do you think, oh, do you know what, I learned from that, it's fine? So, the BMW M5 was one car that I was slightly disappointed of. Everyone thought, yeah, this is an amazing car, and spent a lot of time building up, got really excited to drive it, and I think they are good cars, they're really fast, they're good, for, I can see why people enjoy them, but I just never got the connection yeah. with that car. Like, it was one of them cars that you could, you could be doing, like, over 100 mile an hour in and it feels like you're doing 30 because it was so planted but that was one car that kind of like i never got the attachment to and never um so by the third date you were out yeah I, I, <laughs> oh yeah i enjoyed building it but driving it not as much then yeah. because i don't have that attachment i just found myself not driving it as much I was like oh I'll, t I'll take another car and then in the end we did a, a competition for that car and it it was raffled off Somebody else is enjoying the car now, uh, the winner of the competition. But I, I can see why people love them. But that was just one car that I thought was going to be great, but it just never yeah. lived up to my expectation. Everything else I've done, I've loved. Porsche's over, over at, gone over my expectations. I never thought I'd like them that much. But so maybe you're a sort of Colin Chapman in the waiting because you, you just it's the weight that might, maybe is what you don't like. You like lightweight, yeah, good handling. Yeah, I think that might be it actually. Now you've said about it, yeah, I think it could be the weight. Yeah, it's the lightweight, like to throw it around, like the McLaren. Yeah. I love that car. That thing is just because it tries to kill you. That's what I like about it. <laughs> I was asking the boys about that, and I'm, I'm amazed you guys haven't coined a name for it because it's got its own personality. Like, yeah. I definitely think it does what it wants. We were arguing about. I said, oh, "It's got. It has to have more boost." No, no, it doesn't. It's, it's like it's, yeah. something's happening. Something is like talking through the chassis. There's an electric current, and it's changing. Yeah, it's that thing is nuts. It's got its own personality that thing but i like those cars that try and kill you keep you on your toes i like yeah. that type of stuff so yeah i think maybe it is heavy cars maybe not the ones for me but i guess we'll, we'll find out i might find a heavy car which i do like yeah
Love it. Well, when I finish my lance here, I'd love to show it to you, see what you think. Oh, yeah. You, I mean, the, the uh, Tank Barrett's done a, I think it's a great job. We've made subtle changes with it. Um, and, uh, you know, sort of bit of input from me about how we're going to adapt the suspension to try and keep yeah. it real, like as it was back yeah, in the day, yeah, yeah. without overdoing it. So. Yeah, because I imagine that's going to be quite hard as well to, when I used to, before I did all this, I worked at like a Ford performance place and I used to do like Sierra Cosworth and uh, the Escort Cosworths. And because a lot of the, uh, they were, everyone back in the day used to modify them, lower them on springs, everything and like that. It. And that, yeah, and now they're worth more standard. Yeah. So, but to get the standard parts are no longer available. So what uh, the guys where I used to work used to do is make the like standard springs and they had to make them look like standard, but then you, you're trying to keep still the ride as good as it would if it was yeah. like a little bit sporty because back in the day, I mean, the, the ride height was so high. And they and let the really move. Boaty. Yeah, yeah. But customers used to call us up and say, this is definitely doesn't look like standard height. It's way high at the back. It was like, look at a photo of one standard, how they come out of a factory and they had arch gap like that. That yeah. is literally how they were. But yeah, it's, it's shocking to kind of see what they used to come out like. But yeah, I guess you have that balance with the Lancia, see. They're cool though, they just ride on velvet. So at least, so the, 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 the spring and damper it came on originally, yeah. it lasted a few miles, got yeah. to feel what that was like. But when we pulled it off, the, like the rubber and everything, literally fell, crumbled, oh, yeah. fell apart in your hand. I can imagine. You know that the shims and stuff inside are yeah. going to be melted. So we're gonna, with its last dying breath, we're going to try and get it. We're trying to get it dynoed. Yeah. Find out what it is, and then replicate it. Yeah. So yeah. Like, no, it makes sense. See if it works. No, that, all that stuff's so interesting. I think it's good fun. Wicked. Thanks for showing me around. No. Um, it's a, an coming. amazing insight, and um, yeah, can't wait to drive this and smoke Benedict. Family. We've got it. Yeah, we've right. got it. <laughs> Brilliant, guys. Thanks for watching, Matt. Thank you for being a legend. Keep thank doing you. what you do, and um, see you on the next episode. Hopefully, we'll be out on track on his channel at some point as well.